Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Hey, buddy, I'm Ray. I'm an alcoholic. Hey, Ray. Good to be here. You know, um, somebody, uh, somebody relapsed. I don't know. I got a little experience with relapsing too, but and uh, and I says uh, I said to him outside of an AA meeting, who cares when the last time you drank was? You know, could you imagine walking up to a guy and saying, "I didn't drink in uh, you know like a year." Be, what? What are you nuts? Yeah. Um, so what what matters is your connection to God. So. Uh, you know that that hit me um, that hit me hard years ago. I was a chronic chronic relapser. I came into AA in well, I was dragged to a meeting in the in the 70s, but I came into uh, I went to uh, a uh, rehab in '82, and I stayed clean for about I don't know sober for maybe five years, maybe because I don't really know because when I drank or used I don't know about you but I didn't change my clean date sometimes still wanted the coins you know I got them I have coins you know I've since made amends to the groups that I've taken the coins from and chaired the meetings on other substances you know figured you know they were all drunks they didn't know if my eyes were all pinned shut on something else so um I went I went back I made all amends but I want to I want to say this that after being sober for five years and I, and I got to tell you I I really felt the presence of God during those five years I, I it was no mistakes of it, no mistake about it the the reason I was sober was there was there was a presence of God on me I did some kind of step work not certainly not out of this book I I, I did the family amends I I, I did the uh, some some of the easier amends but it was enough and I I had a, enough of God's grace on me that it lasted for for uh, like I said about five years I don't know um, when when I picked up it um, I um, man I got, I got to tell you it it was suddenly just like in this book and I had no idea what I was doing because if I had to choose I certainly wouldn't have chose that and it was just years years where I could not stop anymore and Finally, I just figured I'm destined to be one of those guys coming in and out of rooms that never, ever stops drinking again. And so uh, I remember going to these meetings, and they were just tired of me. They were just saying, you know, who uh, who relapsed, you know, me. And and they didn't have anything for me. They didn't know what to do. And I walked into, I moved, thank God. You know, I I see it all now as God's grace. I moved, and I... um, I was in this meeting. I'm sharing again. You know, I don't know what the heck I was sharing about, but I certainly wasn't sober uh, or wasn't staying sober. And this woman after the meeting says, why don't you go talk with him? And she was talking about Chris S. Why don't you talk with him? He works with guys like you. Said, All right. You know, so so I, I walked up to this guy and said, you know, listen, I, I, I have to tell you that there's no way I would would have even wanted to uh, to stop anymore. But I had a little daughter at the time. She was two and a half months, and I was driving around and and you know semi blacked out, and and I just noted this this girl did not deserve a drunk or a drug addict as a father. And I, I knew that, but I also knew I couldn't stop no matter what. So I, I approached him, and this man took me into his house, and he explained what alcoholism was to me. And I never had it explained. I might have had it explained in rehabs, but I never had it explained like that. And I tell you, I I don't remember much about what he went through, but I do remember him saying that I was under God's grace right now, and I was sober because of God's grace. And who knows how much time I have, and let's do this fast. And within, um, within two weeks, I was on amends, and I remember he started the... the um, 
um, process, you know, says, you know, write out your resentment list, you know, and I hated everybody. Uh, I hated everyone. I hated you if, I, if, I, if you were my family, if you were my friend, or if you were my enemy. I hated you for something. I just, just did. And as I was writing the, the, the fourth column, um, I wasn't writing it. He told me we're going to meet on Sunday. So Saturday night I started writing it. You know, it was a week early. So, you know, so, and I do that now. When I take someone through to work, I give them a time. I give them a date when we're going to meet again because I just know if you're if if you're anything like anybody, anything like me, well, I, you just, you're just not going to do, you know, I, it, this is just, I, I got to have this book read to me. I can't, I'm not picking this book up and reading, reading this. It's just not, I need it read to me and I need to be told, Ray, you meet me on Sunday to do your step work. I go, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm coming. Um, well, I started doing this and a lot of these resentments just started falling. I wrote them down anyway, and I, I got to tell you, from that from that Sunday on, my thinking is is so much different. Um, I I truly don't look at the. I'm I'm not the same person from that day on. I really am not. I I do not look most of the time. Most of the time. All right. Uh, I realize that the trouble is always me. Most of the time. Now, if I got a, a resentment really hard on me, I I can't get there on my own. I got to pray. I got to gr- grab my sponsor. I got to grab somebody. I, we got to do the prayers again, and I got to go. And usually, it ends up in an amend uh, where, because at the very least, I'm not forgiving this person. That's the the very least. And you know, I know now that resentments lead to amends. So. You know, I, I can't I can't think about that because I'll just start saying, well, I don't really have the resentment because I don't want to make amends to this guy. I hate him. Um, but you know, we're 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 talking about accessing uh, God, accessing the power of God. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I know how to not access the power of God, and that's to have a resentment on me. I have absolutely no power to stop to to not drink to, to to stop drinking if I have resentments on me. It's it's uh, over and over again. I have proved that. So it is life or death for me to not have resentments. And years ago, when I had a hundred resentments, throw another one on. It didn't matter. But now that I'm living free. One resentment is way too much. It's just too much. I can't live with one resentment. And I know the tough ones are, are, are if there's someone that it, it's an ongoing relationship, you know, work or family or, or, or friends. I, I, I understand that. But it's still, it's, it's, it's so important that I live free from resentments. I, um, I, uh, um, obviously prayer and meditation and, and, and I, I even go to church now, um, I, I I switched from uh, let, let me step back. I, I relapsed years ago. I was doing the amends. I was even paying people back money that I owed them because that made no sense to me. I was a big thief too. What made no sense is why should I pay back money to someone who I got away with robbing? Uh, it just made no sense. You talk. I was, I was, uh, if I went to a candy store or any other store, if something fit in my pocket, I thought you were a sucker if you paid for that. I was in a rehab. I was in a halfway house, rather, one time, and the guy's, I'm shoving cigarettes down my pockets. And he goes, what are you doing? He's the guy that drove us there. You need to get kicked out for that. I go, it's cigarettes. What are you talking about? I really didn't understand that that was wrong. I, uh, you know, I, I, I knew not to get caught, but I didn't understand that it was wrong, you know, morally. You know, Chris, Chris says you do good, esteemable acts, you get good self-esteem. You do bad acts, you feel bad about yourself, you know. And, and my actions also, if I'm, 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 um, if I'm causing harms I'm, and I'm doing bad action, uh, uh, actions, I'm not going to, um, I'm certainly not going to have a connection to God. Um, but I went from a, uh, I, I relapsed um, years ago, and I was a, a, a like a, a step Nazi, man. I was taking people through to work, and, and no, 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 I'm sorry. I was doing all my amends. I wasn't taking people through to work. That's what it was. I, um, I um, but I was judging people. I mean, I'd go to meetings, and if they had 20 years, I'm judging them if they're not doing the steps. 
Mm -hmm. All right. And relapse, and after about a year and a half, was the best. It was a good cure for that, you know, because it, it humbled me. And what happened was I I got um, I got sick. I got I you know I don't talk about this too often, but it's 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 the it's a, it's a, it's what happened to me. I got. I got uh, cancer, and they were ripping lymph nodes out of me. And one of the early readings um, of the AA guys was, I will lift up mine eyes um, from um, uh, Glenn Clark. And I had this book for a couple of years. Chris told me to get it. And I had a couple of these books. And in that, in that one book, he was uh, um, talking about this guy who had a, he had a nervous breakdown, and he was recovering in the Great Lakes somewhere. All right. Uh, it was one of the Glenn Clark books. I think it was that one. And and he one, his rehab was he was rowing. He would row a boat. And he was a really wealthy guy. And he was starting to get better. And he was actually going to be able to go back to work. And one day he was rowing a boat. And he fell asleep. He was on a great lake. And he floated out into the middle of great lakes. And it's like an ocean. And it's starting to get dark. And he wakes up. And he says, oh, no. And he starts praying. He's asking God for help. And it's just then it dawned on him that here he was asking God for help, but he has never, ever done anything for God in his whole life. And he committed, I think he committed, he's going to devote half his life or 50% of his life, something like that, to, to God. And I'm reading this just when I'm saying, oh, God, help me. And, and um, I says, you know what? All right, I'll work with others. No. And I started working with other people. And there was a couple of reasons. One, I was, I was lazy. I didn't want to work with people because I was lazy. Two, I, I had better things to do, like watch TV. And three, I was afraid. I was afraid to say the wrong thing because I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know, uh, you know, I, I didn't know this book. Like I said, I had people read it to me. I never really read it myself. Uh, so I started taking people through the work. And and um, you know obviously I'm still here and and everything worked out, but that really uh, that really um, changed my life. I can't even tell you how much that changed my life. Working with others, uh, the the some of the closest relationships I have in the whole world are the people that I've taken through the work. And I, I got to tell you, I'm not crazy about the name sponsors, sponsee, because it puts, I think it puts someone as, on a higher level because uh, I watch guys I've taken through the work and man, they are, you know, I, I go to them for advice. I go to them to, when I'm not hooked in and, and thank God. Um, so, so I think you know we're all brothers and sisters when, when we get through this, and we're all we're all um, connected. And I've gone from um, from that to um, you know, and and I was I was really really hardcore. Um, if somebody didn't want to go through the work, or somebody was balking on amends. Uh, I didn't have too much compassion. I got to tell you, I, I would say ah, you don't you don't want it, you know. And I'd go to the next person. I was working with, with lots and lots of people, and not too long long ago, somebody was talking about me to someone else. You know, I I heard about it, and they says, "Oh, what do you want to go to him for? He's the easier, softer way." Talking about me, I said, "Wow, I must be getting spiritual, you know, because I'm not gonna um, drop somebody." like I would have years ago. I'm just not going to. You know, in, in, in the book, Working With Others, and, you know, another way, if you want to access the, the, um, uh, the power of God, work with others. You know, when I'm off, uh, it's really difficult for me to, 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 you know, get in the self when I'm working with others. And, and in, in, um, in working with others is if you, if you uh, persist, and I never read that years ago. It was always I was always putting the onus on 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 the person I'm taking through the work. But it also says you know we walk hand in hand, uh, and and I have to persist. You know sometimes some people take a little longer. So what? Sometimes, ready for this? I'm going to say it. Maybe they don't have to do all the events. I don't know. I, I, I didn't believe that years ago. I got to tell you, sometimes people get sober in church and they don't have to do what I do. And, and, and you know, that's it doesn't matter to me anymore. I guess that's what I'm saying. It, 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 it really, you know, what, what matters to me is that I do my part. I, I pray, I meditate, 
Um, when I have a resentment on me, I, I, I'll tell you something about resentments. I um, One time Chris asked me to, to uh, speak on amends. And I'm talking, I don't know what I'm saying, but um, I'm sitting amends, you know, I can't do amends without talking about resentments because the resentments for me ends up, you know, most of the time it's a resentment that, that ends up being an amend or, you know, it could be just a harm, but a lot of times it's a, it's a resentment. And um, as I'm talking, I said, I got, a, I got resentments. I got resentments, but I classified them. I put them in a different category. They were work. You know, that's got nothing to do with, you know, me and everything else. That's not true. You know, that was that was affecting me. And I had to go and make amends to those people. There was three people and I had to go make amends to them. And, um, you know, the uh, 11 step, um, you know, you could go to page 52. If you have those bedevilments on you, you know, this is this is just funny. Uh, when when I walk into a meeting for the first time and I have all these bedevilments on me and they tell me to stop no matter what. And I said, well, wait a minute. I have trouble with my personal relationships. I can't control my emotions. I'm miserable. I'm depressed. I can't make a living. I feel useless. I am unhappy. I'm full of fear. That's why I drank. That's the reason I drank. And alcohol did work for that. You know, I drank. I'm not that not that unhappy, you know, at the moment. You know, not that fearful. Yeah, it did work. But obviously what goes along with it is, is, uh, is trouble. So, um so I go, um, I go through this work, and I, uh, and I, and I, I can't tell you all the different types of, you know, be quick to see where religious people are right. Well, I wasn't quick, and I, you know, I certainly didn't see, and I certainly wasn't quick. You know, I used to make fun of people that were would would go to church. Um, I thought they were weak. One of the lines that really hit me hard out of this book was, you know, paradoxically, you know, men of faith have courage. I said, wow, I was living with all this fear on the outside. I would have never told you I was afraid of anything, but the truth truth was, I was just I was afraid. I was afraid of it all, and. When I have real faith, real faith, I am not afraid. What came to me when I had that cancer was, you know what? If I'm going to die, it's it, it, how do I know it's not better that I go than to live? And, and, and here's what I mean. Maybe my will would have been to live and, you know, be, God forbid, drive, be driving with my daughter in the car and cripple her. Well, I'd rather be dead than that. I can't. I, it's not my choice. You know, it's not my uh, uh, business, rather. If I was to go, I was going to go. And, you know, and that was faith. And, and what's scary is for two weeks before I got diagnosed with that cancer, I was praying for more faith. So really be careful when you, if you're praying for more faith. Like, say, God, give me more faith, but, but don't give me cancer. You know, you got to throw some other things on it. You know? I, um... um I, I can't tell you what a blessing it was getting sick. I can't even begin to tell you because I wouldn't have that kind of faith. And then when the everyday fa- uh, uh, um, uh, problems come and, and the fears come, financial insecurity, that's been on me a little bit. Um, you know, I had, I had some other um, um, illness that was on me a little bit. And, you know, what, what's, um, what happens is you get, kind of battle tested you know um why does time matter time matters because you're gonna you're gonna um when when someone has um lived sober through those trying times and rested on god rather than alcohol you know i want what that guy has i want what that woman has i i that is that's that's everything for me that's um that's walking through life without being afraid and have an absolute faith. Uh, faith is, is trust. And, and, um, if, if I have that kind of faith, what do I have to worry about? You know, if God is, is right here, right next to me, you know, with his arm around me, what do I have to worry about? Well, that's real faith and real trust. And there's some, there's some things that, you know, um, I gotta tell you, the scary thing is, I don't deserve it, and I, as sometimes there's nothing I could do to have it. There's nothing I could do. You know, I pray. I think the prayers really matter. Um, 
prayers, meditation. I meditate. I, I meditate on the Word in the Bible now, rather than just you know years ago. I used to do do uh, like uh, Hindu meditation, clear my mind, clear my mind. Um, but uh, what matters is I keep growing toward God. That's what matters. Um, I, I've been actually. I, I, I was always short with. Um, 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 my my uh, child and and like if years ago if she would drop something I would get upset and 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 you know my father was like that I don't I don't know if it had anything to do with it maybe you know but but it's not it's not a um, it's not something I like about myself and I have been noticing that's going away I just don't care I don't care if you drop something I don't care if you you know what matters is um, tolerance and patience. And and um, I would not have had been close to get any of that if it wasn't for that man taking me into his house. And I didn't look like I look right now. And he brought me into his house. And he um, and and I mean this guy just showed love to me when when I did not love myself anymore. I tell you, it was not. Uh, it wasn't a pretty picture. And he took me through this work. Uh, I, I got to tell you, I have. Um, I, I, my, um, I, I want to talk about this this one um, this one amend I made. I was in I was in my um, I was in my um, um, it was a house a couple ha- couple houses ago, and and I brought um, my neighbor in my backyard was going to call the township on me because water was mud was going down on his house and I says you know what let me use this I'm furious this was years ago I'm furious I want to do everything from attack him to just you know, the back of his house was facing the back of my house I could have just throw rocks at his house for his whole life um, it, this is where my thinking goes you know so I said, let me use this. What you know? And I wrote it out. You know, and, and called somebody up. And all right, what? Why was that? Well, the guy's name was Bob. I'm mad, Bob. Why is Bob? Why am I mad at Bob? Bob is going to call it authorities on me. And what's it affect? Affects everything, but pocketbook and a lot of other stuff. Uh, and then I pray, fourth column. I moved, I brought 100 tandems of dirt into my backyard. It wasn't a big backyard. 100 tractor trailers of back tractor trailers of uh, of dirt into the backyard over the weekend because I knew it was illegal because I knew we only allowed three trucks because it changes the grade. I mean, I beep 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 all weekend long. And I'm sitting with piles of dirt. It's July, it's supposed to be dry. And we had the, the biggest rainstorms that we ever. I mean, it, just, it was looked like California mudslides. It just went onto his hat, onto his yard. And this guy had a beautiful manicured, like he had flowers and trees. And I'm and I'm mad at him. I'm mad at him after doing this work. I says, Oh my God. I, I grabbed the shovel. I walked into the back. I just sunk. I mean, it was just too much. It was just so much. I, I went back in the house through the show. I walked, walked around. I made amends to this guy. I mean, amends, right, right there. I just made amends to this guy. And I, I um, hired landscapers to, to fix it. And, and you know what? Uh, when he dropped his daughter off at the same school, that my daughter was going to, I didn't have to hide or wait for him to come first or have an altercation with him. Uh, and you want to talk about being tapped into God. Well, um, without that thinking, without this process, I am just completely shut off from the sunlight of the Spirit. I'm, I, can't, I don't get this. I'm just not wired like that. I'm wired in, as self. I run on self. I'm self-centered fear. I'm afraid. I'm selfish. I'm self-centered. And I don't give a shit about anyone. And the truth is... When I, when I get when I go through this process, it's a real easy process. This step work is you know it's 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 not that big a deal. You know if you haven't done the steps, go do the steps. It's not that hard. I go through this process. I get to the other side and I can walk around. I don't have to hate this guy, Bob. You know I don't even have to hate myself anymore. And I really don't hate myself. I, mean, I hated myself for years. Um, 
regrets. I don't regret the past anymore. I made a, a, a lot of really, really stupid, stupid moves in, in my life. But you know what? All those moves, I'm the sum total, we're all the sum total, everything we did in our lives, it got us right here, right now. So, you know, I, I, I can't, I can't, uh, think that God's path for me was wrong. I don't think that's a, a healthy way of, of thinking for me. You know, it got me right right here where I am right now. And um, I got to tell you, I, I, I don't know if, um, 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 if, if you if you um, if anyone here has relapsed or if anyone's um, had some doubt uh, because I, I certainly did there was some, a number of times in the past um, before I got through this work again that I thought that I'm never going to get that connection with God again I really thought that that was going to happen I knew I had a connection and then I knew it was gone and I said oh no I ruined it never ever going to get it again and um, I, I, I don't I don't believe that to be be uh, true. I think prayer, meditation, working with others is uh, is key. Ask, just keep asking, keep asking. You know, I know God. God, um, he, he just answers all the time. Uh, I want to thank uh, this group for asking me to speak, and I want to open up the. Um, I'd like to open up the meeting now to um, for for people to share questions or anything. All right. I could keep talking. <laughs> I know I hate it when the speaker goes on forever, but. No, I'm going to turn it so. Thank you for your sharing. So, you know, I love what you said. Um, God, is or, God is or he isn't when, when I'm in the gray area. I'm on God isn't, and I don't even know it. You know, there is no gray area. I think we're all pretty extreme in here. You know, God is or he isn't. They didn't write down God is or maybe he's like maybe a little bit. Maybe, you know, he wrote God is or he isn't. And. You know, if I start saying, well, I don't know, I'm on God, is it? You know, thanks. You know, sometimes sometimes we got to watch them die. You know, I know I have. I don't know, but for the grace of God, I, I my ego was, was you know, I don't know, was put on check for, for a little while so I could hear something. But, man, you are right. I, I don't know what. If Anybody got an answer to that one? What do you do when the ego's... Uh, you know, so big that they 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 they're not teachable. It's got. Uh, it's got uh, I don't have an answer to that. Thank you. Thanks. Sure. You, you know, you know, um, I was going to make amends to someone for about the third or fourth time, and, and a buddy of mine grabs me and says, "When are you going to make amends to God?" You know, for hating on this person, and you know, it never, never dawned on me. I said, "Wow, you know, here I am. I, I'm, I'm everything, everything God's ever given to me, and all I do is ask, 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 ask. Here, I'm not forgiven. I'm not living the way God wants me to live. I'm just God gave me this. God gave me this. Help me with this. Help me with this. He goes, when are you gonna make amends to God? I said, so, never thought of that. You know." And, and and you know and, and now you know I, I I don't I try not to my way of thinking's changed. It's like not because I owe, because I love God. I will look at everything that God has done for me. I mean, for me not to love God and like worship Him is is you know is um you know it's not grateful. You know, ingrate. I've always been ingrate. Thanks. We are at the hour. Thanks. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.